Good morning. Glad to see everybody here this morning. Let's stand as we begin our worship time together. Hear the holy roar of God resound. Watch the waters part before us now. Come and see what he has done for us. Tell the world of his great love, our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who saves. Let God arise, let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Arise, let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. His enemies will run for sure. The church will stand, she will endure. He holds the keys of life, our Lord. Death has no sting, no final word. Our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who saves. Let God arise. Let God arise. Our God reigns now. God is the God. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who saves. Our God is a God who God is a God who saves. Let God arise. Let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Arise. Let God arise. Our God reigns now and forever. He reigns now and forever. Let God arise. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Uh, it is so wonderful to have you here. If it's your first time especially, uh, welcome to Southwest. Uh, we're a bunch of different people from different, different places. Uh, we get to come together and worship God. It's an incredible thing. Uh, so as we welcome you, would you join me in prayer? Father, we thank you so much for this morning, and God, for waking us up and bringing us together. Uh, God, I pray that in all things today, you're glorified more than anything else. Uh, God, not just today in this building, uh, but outside of it, and this entire week. Uh, God, your light is seen in a very dark world. Uh, God, that we can glorify you in the way that we sing and talk and pray today, but also how we live and act tomorrow. Uh, God, bless this morning, and bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for being here. We've, uh, this last week has been an interesting week. Seems like every week we say that. But um, with all the stuff that's going on in our country, uh, and I want you to, Caleb and I have been just before service talking about it, we've been, we've been emailing. Um, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be having a, a prayer session uh, regarding all of this that's going on, and that's all the details that we have at this time. But be listening for that, and, and we're going to, to do that soon. Um, we need to pray for our country, and we need to pray for all the things that are going on, uh, for shootings, for just everything uh, that's happening. So uh, would you uh, bow with me in prayer? Father, thank you. Thank you for being our God. You are a God who saves, and uh, we pray that uh, that your your name will rise in this country. Uh, that uh, more and more people will turn to Him. Father, help us to get out of the sometimes the religious uh, junk that's being said, and help us just be Your people. And help us just be uh, Christians, those who follow you. We thank you for all that you've done, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand again and sing. <laughs> Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise, let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise, let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise, let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the glory of the lord rise among us let the praises of the king rise among us let it rise let it rise let the songs of the lord rise among us let the songs of the lord rise among us let the joy of the king Rise among us, let it rise, let it rise. Oh, 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 oh let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise, let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. to be in your presence with your people singing praises I love to stand and rejoice I lift my hands and praise my voice I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises 
I love to stand and rejoice, lift my hands and raise my voice. You set, you set my feet to dancing, you fill my heart with song. You give me reason to rejoice, rejoice. I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. I love to stand and rejoice, lift my hands and raise my voice. I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. I love to stand and rejoice, lift my hands and raise my voice. You set, you set my feet to dancing, you fill my heart with song. You give me reason to rejoice, rejoice. I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. I love to stand and rejoice, lift my hands and raise my voice. I love to be in your presence with your people singing praises. I love to stand and rejoice. Lift my hands, lift my hands, lift my hands and raise my voice. You may be seated. Revelation 3, 14 to 22. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich. I have accorded, acquired. acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are Watching wretched, wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, 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 and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so you can become rich, and white clothes to wear, so you can cover your shameful nakedness, and salve to put on your eyes, so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. There are things as we travel this earth, shifting sands that transcend all the reason of man. But the things that matter the most in this world, they can never be held in our hands. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I'll believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. I believe that the Christ who was slain on the cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely a new life is mine. That is why by the cross I will stay. I believe in a hill called 
exalt Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. I believe that this life with its great mysteries surely someday will come to an end. But faith will conquer the darkness and death and will lead me at last to my friend. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. Good morning, church family. There's a saying that goes, Jesus, take the wheel. You may have heard it before. You may have seen it on the internet. I believe there's even a country song with it titled. But what it is supposed to remind us is that we shouldn't worry about the small things, but let God take over and us trust his plan. Well, I don't know about everybody here, but I think sometimes that's easier said than done. Well, for me, recently, I was actually forced to let Jesus take the wheel. You see, I coached track, and we had a track meet in Grand Island. Um, about 8 o'clock at night, we started taking off after a long day, and we got about 15 minutes down the road, and our bus broke down. We had to wait about an hour for the bus driver to get to Fremont to fill up the bus, then we had to wait an hour and a half for that bus to get to us, and then we had to wait another hour and a half to get home. So on a Thursday night, we rolled in at about one o'clock in the morning. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the last thing that I wanted to do on a Thursday night was be on a bus filled with girls, 15, 16, 17 years old, running around, screaming and yelling, dancing, singing, and somebody's gonna have to help me with this, it's called TikTok. That was a fun night. But the thing was, was that the, the coaches and I and the bus driver, as soon as the bus broke down, we wanted to figure out how to get that bus going right away. So, of course, we pulled out our phones, looked up a few things. We ended up pouring water into the engine to try to cool it down. I think one of the coaches was even willing to walk eight miles to try to get some duct tape to fix the hose. Of course, nothing worked, so what did we have to do? We had to let Jesus take the wheel. And we kind of slumped in our chairs and we kind of just said, well, it's gonna be a late night, so we might as well make the best of it. And so we kind of talked to our athletes, coaches kind of cracked some jokes, and I think we spent about a half an hour in a meeting and basically got a bunch of work done. And the thing is, is that I'm not going to tell you it was a good night, but it could have definitely been a lot worse. Well, as Christians, we're also asked to trust God's plan. In James chapter 5, verses 13 through 15, the Bible says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in their name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Well, the thing is, is that I think we don't always do this. We have these things that are called cell phones. 
Now, I'm not saying these are bad things. I saw some people when we did the uh, Bible verse, you pulled them out. I think if we didn't have the cell phones, we'd probably still be in Grand Island today. But the thing is, is that we have all of this information at our fingertips with these things, and yet sometimes we don't trust that God has the answers. When we get sick and di diagnosed with a disease, do we fall to our knees and pray, or do we look up a cure on our phone? If we lose our jobs, do we bow our heads in prayer, or do we look at the want ads right away? It's not always easy to remember that God has a plan for us, but what we do have is we have the gift of Holy Communion that will remind us that God gave his only son to die on the cross for us. And we gotta remember that if Christ died on the cross and gave his life, then we can trust our life with him. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we know that you have a plan for us. We know that we should trust in that plan, but sometimes we try to take matters into our own hands. Lord, today I ask you to light a fire in our hearts, to teach us to follow you without second guessing. I ask you to bless the bread and the cup. Help us to remind us that your son died on the cross for, your sin, for our sins. Lord, please let the gift of Holy Communion focus our hearts and minds on you to never forget the sacrifice our Lord Jesus gave for us. Finally, I ask you to continue to bless our church. We've been given so many blessings that we don't always appreciate those gifts. Today, Lord, I pray that we do appreciate the gifts and help us do your will. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me and the life that i now live by i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me let's stand for the song before the sermon <clears throat> each day i'll do a golden deed by helping those who are in need my life on earth is but a span and so i'll do the best i can like this evening sun is sinking low a few more days and i must go to meet the deeds that i have done where there will be no setting sun to be a child of god each day my light must shine along the way i'll sing his praise while ages roll and strive to help some troubled soul Life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds. There will be no setting sun. The 
only life that will endure is one that's kind and good and pure. And so for God, I'll take my stand. Each day I'll lend a helping hand. Life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done, where there will be no setting sun, while going down life's weary road, I'll try to let some traveler's love, I'll try to turn the night to day. Make flowers bloom along the way. Life's evening sun is sinking low. A few more days, and I must go to meet the deeds that I have done. Where there will be no setting sun. You may be seated. Several years ago, many, many years ago, when I was in graduate school, I remember being in a statistics class. And in the statistics class, you're doing surveys and statistics. That makes sense, doesn't it? And uh, I remember there was a, a young teacher in the, in the class, and she wanted to know what was the least to get by in a survey. And so generally you have a population and you survey these people and then you come to conclusions. And, and I remember she asked the teacher, What's the least amount of people to survey in a population in order to get an accurate count? And I'll never forget his answer. He said, every one of them. You know, we don't ever think of that, do we? We want to get the least amount and those kind of things. And, and that's kind of the way statistics is. It's kind of, you know, if I started quoting statistics, you're your eyes would roll in the back of your head and, and, and you would probably tune me out if you have it already. <laughs> but it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that something is wrong in, in our country. That something doesn't seem right. That the, the violence and the stuff that's going on is just not what God wants. There have been shootings and trials of black men and looting and riot, and we have just lacked a moral sense out there in our government before and after the election. And so what do we, what do, we do about it? Last week, we, uh, we had a scripture that we used from Ephesians chapter 6, and he said, Finally, brothers, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power and put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. I think we need to take a stand. There are times when we have to do that. A little bit later uh, in the same passage, therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand. And then he says, stand firm then. And then he goes on and talks about the full armor of God. Four times he uses that word stand. And I, I, I want to know what does it mean to stand. It's really a very simple uh, principle. 
It's very, very simple, but it's quite a challenge in practice. In, in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus is walking along the seashore, the Sea of Galilee, and he sees Peter, Andrew, James, and John, and they're cleaning their nets, and he, and he comes up to them. And I've always wondered about this passage because I wonder if there were more than just those four people there. If there was a crowd of people, if James and John's parents were there, or Peter and Andrew's parents were there, or, or the co-workers, or, or just any number of people. Jesus simply says, follow me. That's why I wonder if there were more than than those four, because those four left everything they had and walked away. Who took care of the, of the fishing business? Who took care of the boat? Who took care of the nets? Did those people just stay there while Peter, James, and John, and Andrew left? That's why I think there may have been others but they took up that challenge and they followed Jesus. And later in Matthew chapter 9, uh, Jesus comes up to Matthew, who's a tax collector. And, and he comes up to him. And again, I, I wonder, you know, Matthew wasn't just sitting there by himself. Were there other people around that heard Jesus say to Matthew, follow me? Some took up the challenge, some didn't. Matthew decided to leave everything he had and to follow Jesus. And I wonder if even the other, however many, four, five, seven now, if the other seven, Jesus very simply asked them to follow me. Because you see, to follow Jesus means to take a stand. You remember the rich ruler who came to Jesus? There's a number of them, uh, of, of accounts in the, in the Gospels. And as you read them, it's kind of interesting. Uh, they come from very different uh, angles as far as that's concerned. But in every one of them, Jesus, one guy, you know, this, this rich ruler comes to Jesus and he says, what can I do to inherit eternal life? I always think it's interesting that he used that word inherit. There wasn't anything he wanted. You know, this is, a, this is a rich ruler. What can I do to get this without having to, to do too much? And Jesus says, I want you to keep the commandments. And, and the guy says, I've, I've kept these from, the youth, from my youth up. What, what do I lack? And Jesus very simply says to him, go out and sell everything you have. And follow me. I could go on and on because there are several examples of Jesus telling people to follow him. But there's one passage I want to give you. This is the passage right after Jesus tells Peter, get behind me, Satan. In Matthew chapter 16, and verse 24, then Jesus said to the disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross. Follow me. In essence, what Jesus told them was to take a stand. And that's the same call to all of us today, to follow Jesus. And I know it's speculation, but I, I wonder if Jesus were to walk in these doors today and come down here and, and occupy this pulpit, you know, would we expect him to expound on these great biblical passages? Would we think that he would uh, go into great detail? I, I almost think perhaps his message would probably be, I want you to follow me. Here's the thing. In following Jesus, we might waver. We might just kind of be hot and cold as the passage we've just read. We'd be in good company if that happened. I'm not advocating it, but I think we'd be in good company. I think of Moses when God comes to him and he says, I want you to bring my people out. And Moses has all kinds of excuses. 
who am I to do this? What should I say or who should I say sent me? And he says, what if they don't listen? And then he says, what if I'm, and I'm just not a very good speaker. And the Bible says God got angry with him. Why? Because he wouldn't follow him. Because even though he had all the chances, he wouldn't follow what God wanted him to do. There's a saying that says, if you want to make God laugh, show him your plans. I think there's a corollary to that that says, if you want to make God angry, don't follow him. Later, we find Moses interceding for the children of Israel. The Bible says that God changed his mind because of Moses. Peter said, if if all fall away, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Even if I have to die with you, even if I have to disown you, or even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And before we're too hard on old Peter, see what the rest of the verse says. It says, and all the disciples said the same. It's possible that you've wavered at some point. In fact, I would venture to guess that's true. Jesus told us to count the cost. I think I've told you this story before, but I remember going to Trinidad many years ago. And uh, Parker Henderson, who was the minister at the time, the missionary at the time, took us around the town uh, of San, uh, San, I think it was San Bernardino. Don't remember. It's been that long. We were driving around and, and there were housing projects in different parts of the city. It was a very poor city. But at one place, And this was before the little satellite dishes. There was a huge satellite dish out in front. It was enormous. And the thing was, the house wasn't built. It wasn't finished. There were weeds growing around the satellite dish. And I remember what Parker said. Parker said, you got to count the cost. And it's the same thing with us to follow Jesus. We've got to count the cost. In fact, there was a passage, there is a passage of Scripture that talks about three different people coming to Jesus. One says, let, let me go bury my father. Let me go say goodbye to my family. And Jesus says, no, you've got to do this to follow me. We've got to count the cost. There's going to be some fair weather people. Things going good. We're good, good Christians. It's kind of an oxymoron, isn't it? Things going well, we're going to be gung-ho. We're going to be who is it, but if things get bad, we tend to kind of fall off. I, I use a lot of sports analogies, but it's interesting to me that a few years ago when the Kansas City Royals baseball team was doing real well and going to the World Series. A lot of people wore Kansas City Royals out uh, shirts and hats and things like that. You don't see very many of them today. Why is that? Because they're not doing very well. I won't say that about the Huskers because the Huskers fans are usually pretty good. And, and you'll notice I wear Razorback stuff all the time because they lose in football almost every week. In fact, people come up and try to pick a fight with me. They say, oh, you know, who, who the Razorbacks play this week? And I say, I don't know, we're going to lose. But there are some people who are like that, aren't there? People who are fair weather fans. And this passage that the Sykes family read from Revelation, and I know there are people, uh, commentators especially lately, that say, it doesn't really mean what we say it means. You know, there was a a place near there that had ice cold water. There was a place near there that had hot water. And, And, you know, Jesus is saying to those people, you know, be one or the other. I think it still says the same thing that we've been saying all along. You can't be lukewarm you can't be fair weather and be a follower of jesus and that's why jesus says the greatest command is to love god with everything that you have 
And when everyone was worried about everything except being a disciple of Jesus, and I, this is, you talk about a go-to verse. If I'm talking to somebody whose life is struggling, if I'm talking to somebody about a job, this is the verse I go to. Very simply, it says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. In essence, what Jesus says there is, follow me. The thing is, when we make a stand, he won't leave us alone. He won't leave us to stand alone. I think of the mighty heroes of the Old Testament. I think of Daniel, who, in spite of the fact that they came along and says, everybody has to bow down before this this idol of the king. Daniel didn't do it. In fact, the scripture says, and I, I pointed this out before, it's an interesting scripture. It says, Daniel goes, as was his custom, and he goes and he prays and he gives thanks to God. That one always blows me away. Things are going bad. In fact, he might die. He might be thrown in the lion's den, and it says, he goes and thanks God. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are about to be thrown into the furnace and they look at each other and say, we will not do what you want us to do because our God will save us. But they don't leave it at that. They say, but if he doesn't, we will still follow him. I remember Esther when it looked like they were going to eradicate all the Jews. Mordecai comes to her and says, don't think that because you're in the king's house that you alone of all the Jews will escape, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Jesus says, I will never leave you. And he says, I will leave the Spirit for you. And he will guide you in all truth. There's a passage in 1 Corinthians 15 where Paul says, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you and on which you have taken your stand even paul refers to following jesus in that way i want to go back to one more scene it's a scene that that's kind of interesting to me peter has denied jesus not only once but three times jesus turns and looks at him and i I've often, you know, I I said I would love to see certain things. I would be afraid to see that scene because the look on Jesus' face. But he turns and he looks at Peter when the rooster crows. And Jesus is crucified. The apostles don't know what to do. In fact, Peter says, I'm going fishing. I'm going back to what I used to do. Jesus is gone. Even after the resurrection, he doesn't know what to do. And, and they go out fishing one night. And they, they just, and I, <laughs> believe me, uh, I've, I've been uh, on enough of these fishing trips to know what it's like not to catch anything. They didn't catch a thing. But right around sunrise, Someone yells out to them and says, if you put your nets on the other side. And they put their nets on the other side and they come up with so many fish they had to get help. It almost broke their nets. There's somebody standing on the shoreline. There's a little fire going and Peter says, it's the Lord. And he can't wait for them to get there. He jumps in the water. When he comes up there, Jesus 
has a little fire going. And, and, and you know the scene. It's the feed my sheep discussion. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Three times he says that to him. And, and many people think he's restoring him. But at the end of that, John is following behind him. And Peter, it's my sense that he's trying to change the subject because Jesus has just nailed him. And he says, Lord, what about him? And Jesus told him something remarkable. He said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Jesus calls us very simply today to follow him. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart, in my heart, in my heart. to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to be more loving in my heart, in my heart. Good morning. It is a beautiful day outside, isn't it? And all the sunshine, it's a little bit nippy, but that wakes us up and prepares us better to worship this morning, right? Um, I have a few things that I want to announce, but first of all, before anything else, I want to welcome all our visitors. We are so happy to have you as our guests, and we hope that uh, You'll stay around after services a little while so we can get to know you a little better and we want to welcome you and, and treat you as the family you deserve to be treated as. We are a family here and we hope that uh, as you visit you would be encouraged to call this place your home as well. Uh, today is the last day for donations to the Mountain States Children's Home. So if you have uh, something to donate, if you'll just get that to one of the elders we can make sure it gets to the right place and um, 
it's not the last time forever or anything, but it's for the, this particular pickup. And so this is the opportunity before they, they take those things to the Mountain States Children Home. Uh, as we elders are calling people, one of the things that came up in uh, some of uh, my calls anyway, was the fact that uh, things are looking a little like they need some sprucing up and cleaned up and our grounds are not looking as good as they, they should, which happens to all our homes. We always have to everybody get out and do some spring cleanup. So it's time for our spring cleanup here at the building and our grounds need some work and the, the saying is many hands make light work. So I think if we have a good turnout, we can probably knock it off in just a couple hours. So on Saturday, April 24th, we're encouraging people to bring your rakes, your gloves, your clippers, and so on to trim bushes, rake leaves, clean out flower beds, and we're going to have that take place at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And, of course, sometimes uh, things can happen that are out of our control. If it rains, um, then we will move the cleanup instead to May 1st. But I, I hope to see a lot of you there. It's a uh, good way to give back and, and just uh, be an encouragement for people to, to visit. I know if you, you see a place that's well taken care of, you, you think that they're also going to take care of the people that are going there. I um, want to do a congratulations to Selena and Austin Bennett on the arrival of their baby boy last Friday. Um, the baby is in uh, currently in ICU, but I think uh, the last I heard was doing very well. So but uh, it's always good for any new family to have the prayers for the family and and that the the baby will grow to not only physically but um, the spiritual growth will also take place under the the parents with the the new one into their care as I was uh, listening to the sermon um, and the, the Lord's Supper which I, I really appreciated um, I was kind of along the same lines that I think both both of them were addressing, which some of it is just uh, the things we worry about and the things that we should not worry about. And uh, I know a lot of us probably all even worried about what are we going to wear this morning and and uh, worry about when what our noon meal is going to be and all kinds of things like that. And uh, Jesus addressed this. And in uh, Matthew 6, verse 25, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body or what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store, store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? As I was growing up, I grew up in a congregation that was real small, but we had one lady we'd go over and help at her house, and she was kind of the worrier on steroids. She worried about if we were going to hurt ourselves while we were helping clean up, if we were mowing, the, the mower was going to cut off something, or if uh, it didn't do that, it'd throw a rock and put out an eye and uh, that we would work too hard and we'd have a heart attack or if uh, um, we would have heat exhaustion because we got too hot and you know you could name it she could worry about it and one of the things that uh, I did appreciate about her though even though she did worry about that and all that it, a lot of times was not about herself it was more about us and worrying about us and so she did have at least one thing right there, and that was the love that God commands us to have for one another. And so I think as we think about taking our stand, that's always got to be, no matter who we're talking to, we've got to remember everyone's made in God's image and that um, God loves them just as he loves us. And we want to show that same kind of love, even though you could have lots of disagreements. And as we take stands for Jesus, um, have that attitude of love and if anything else feel sorry for them that they don't know God's love um, if you want to look at Galatians 5 verses 13 and 14 
It says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. And if you read on down through that, he lists a lot of the things that we do get caught up in, the things that uh, sometimes we do make our stands on, which have nothing to do with our eternal purposes. And so try to always keep those things in our mind. Have that love. Will you bow with me? Father, we are so thankful for your love. We're so thankful that you, you have the things that we worry about taking care of for us, and you promise that uh, you will take care of us. We have many that are missing here that uh, have passed on to be in your, your arms, and, and we're so, so grateful that you do welcome us into your kingdom, you know, resting home. We're in your kingdom now, but we, we eventually are going to be in that, that eternal place that we all long for, and that that home with you where everything has been set right and uh, all the things that we worry about here and the concerns that we have and the, the things that are fraught with danger, they just all are nothing and that you take care of all those. We're so thankful for our members that uh, have been welcoming some new ones. We have had some bursts here recently and we're just so happy for Selena and Austin and their new one and we just pray that you'll be with that family and with the baby and and we know that you have great plans for each and every one of us and we just pray that you will help them be able to yield and each one of us to yield to your will and to take the stands when we should and and also that we can remember that eternally we have a home with you and that we have that to look forward to and that just makes everything that uh, seems so hard in this life a lot more uh, palatable. Thank you for, for sending Jesus for us. We know he came and he could have came down off that cross, but he was willing to stay up there because he loved us even while we were still sinners. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, good morning. Welcome to our next episode of Tall Tales with Caleb and Cole. I am Cole. I am Caleb. Welcome. Uh, today we are super excited. We have Janine Sutko with us. Uh, she is the leader of our Prayer Warrior ministry, and we could not be more excited to learn more about that ministry and how it works and uh, all the fun things that they do. So. It Here we an, go. It is an honor to have you with us, Janine. Thank you. Uh, so first things first, tell us just a little bit about your ministry and uh, especially your vision for 2021. Okay. Uh, our ministry is pretty basic. Uh, we have been uh, doing this prayer warrior ministry since uh, Chris Pearson was here. He was the first person to initiate the ministry. And then after he left, I have taken it over. So it's been quite a few years. Um, it's pretty basic. I'll, I'll go through what we do. We start with um, cards that are taken during a service. So each uh, member of the congregation has the opportunity to write down requests. They can be petitions, they can be praises, uh, whatever. They write it on the back of the attendance card, and then those cards are collected uh, during the service. Also, you have the opportunity for members that want something, a prayer request that's personal, they can uh, write that request and put it in an envelope, and those requests will just be for the elders. So basically, after the cards are collected, after communion is taken, our prayer warriors will go and collect the cards and they will go to a quiet place, usually um, like the church library uh, or some other place in the building. They'll go to a quiet place and they will uh, immediately pray over those cards. And then when they're done, they will return to the uh, church service and um, 
that, that's it for that immediate prayer request or the prayer time. Um, basically, we have couples that pray together, um, and then we have some individuals, and then I team those up and uh, so that there's always two people praying over the cards each Sunday. And right now with the current uh, list of folks that we have, the rotation is about every 10 weeks, you have your opportunity to pray on a Sunday. And then after all the requests are um, prayed over, we put those requests in the office and then those requests are typed up and then an email is sent out to us on Monday. And then those of us that didn't have the opportunity to pray on Sunday will be able to pray over those cards during the week. So there's kind of a twofold uh, opportunity for praying. And then also sometimes the office gets requests from individuals where they um, might want the prayer warriors to pray during the week. So those requests, whether they're emailed or called in, uh, will get typed up and then they will be sent to us via email and then we have the opportunity to pray over those requests during the week. Can you tell us a little bit how members can get involved? And if, if they have it on their heart that they wanna be part of this ministry, um, what can they do, how can they do it to uh, become, quote unquote, a, a, a prayer warrior? Absolutely. Um, for anyone that has a, a, a prayer full heart or you feel led to you know, be a prayer warrior, it's very easy. Um, we just let us know and we, we will add you to the list. Um, like I said, I, I work on the rotation so that you, know, you are teamed up with a, another woman or another man. Um, and then couples um, can also pray together, but um, our goal is to always have two people praying uh, over their requests. So, yep, if the Spirit is leading you to uh, use your power of, of prayer, we would love to have you in our ministry. Awesome. Yeah. And because you deal with so much prayer, uh, so many requests, <laughs> so many people, just mm -hmm. with their hands of prayer covering everyone, uh, how can we specifically pray for you and your ministry? Um, I would love uh, prayers that God would just be glorified above all and that our hearts would really be on him and that we would have a desire to um, just to communicate with him through the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. That's amazing. Amen to that. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate your time and Incredible. coming and hanging out with us this morning. You're welcome. Um, and then, is there a and this is just is there a specific email that people can use to send in prayer requests or just to the office? To or? the office okay. email. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can just put that in the yes in the notes. Yeah, you'll yes. see it right here. Right here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right here. Yes. Um, all right. That's okay. it. Mm. Thank, you. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to, to Janine for being part of this. Mm -hmm. uh, we really appreciate her coming in and giving us a glimpse into what the prayer warrior ministry is. Uh, fun fact about Janine, she has actually been way more involved in our church than just mm -hmm. with prayer warriors. She is a teacher in our children's education uh, ministry, and she has been for what seems like forever. Mm -hmm. um, she has really set the bar high for VBS as she ran that for a number of years. And her creativity is always something that this church has been blessed by. And uh, the kids especially have been blessed by her uh, abilities and talents. And we are just so thankful to have her part of this church. Mm -hmm. Especially with the, the, the Prayer Warrior program with having so many prayer requests come over your lap and just seeing all the stories, seeing all the requests that are just so intense that uh, to have that kind of patience and passion about this is pretty incredible. So we are very grateful to have her. Uh, so thank you for joining us for this week of Tall Tales. We'll see you next time. That was kind of growly. <clears throat> my mask is invading my mouth. <laughs> <clears throat> see ya. See ya. Announcement uh, I've been asked to make sure we all know about is the Mayday Baskets. 
there are some Mayday baskets that will be made uh, to, give, to be given to, if I remember right, it could be a stranger, somebody that doesn't go to our church, or somebody that is in our church that you feel like would be blessed. I think there are cards somewhere at the back over here uh, that you can pick one up and fill out who you think someone uh, is that, that uh, could benefit from that and uh, just turn those into the office slot uh, would be great. Um, we're going to sing this last song together. I think uh, I appreciate, you know, Jim's words and, and Patrick's words about letting Jesus take over. You know, Jesus didn't call the disciples to stay sitting in the boat. He called them out. He didn't call us to stay sitting on the bench. He wants us in the game. And, uh, you know, we all think that we've got to be the best player, but there's a supporting cast too. He just wants us to get into uh, the game. And uh, now we've, we've sung this song, um, COVID, you know, time flies when COVID's around, but we did this for Awesome Wednesday Evenings over a year ago, and so hopefully you pick it back up if you've forgotten it. Uh, but it is a great song just talking about how I could just sit and kind of be on the side, but God has called me out. God has called me to follow him. And so let's stand and, uh, and we'll wrap up with this song together this morning. I could just sit, I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence. I could just stay, I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. I could just sit, I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence. I could just stay, I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. I could hold on, I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. I could be safe, I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home, never let these walls down. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You lead me, Lord. I could hold on. I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. I could be safe. I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home. Never let these walls down. You have called me higher. You have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You lead me, Lord. I will be yours, Lord. I will be yours for all my life, so let your mercy like the path before me. I will be yours, Lord. I will be yours for all my life, so let your mercy light the path before me. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. And you have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You have called me higher, you have called me deeper, and I'll go where you will lead me, Lord. You God leads you this week.